Hey! Let's wait a bit for the others to join before I continue. Hello, hello everyone. Sorry for the slight delay. Okay, let's wait a little bit more before I continue to give others time to join. Okay, so for those who want to try this out, um, I've sketched this and um, digitally. So um, after this live, I'll be sharing it here in this event. So you can, um, you can save it and you can print it out and then you can trace over it if you want to, or you can use it as a guide if you want to sketch it out yourself. But I've sketched it simplified so that um, you can easily try this out on your own. So um, I hope you'll try it out. Okay, so um, I decided to do an orchid this time because um, this month um, there was this special day, uh, March 3rd actually. It's World Wildlife Day and it's, it's celebrated dearly to um, raise awareness to plants and animals that are um, endangered or at risk so that um, every year we um, get to remember and keep in mind that um, uh, we have to take care of um, everything around us on earth so that you know everything is balanced okay so um, apparently um, there's there are some species of orchids that are endangered so um, not this one particularly, but um, I didn't really look at one by one, but there are some, a few. So if you'd like, you can uh, search and find out yourself. Um, and not just the orchids, all the um, species, both flora and fauna. And, you know, it's good to know so that um, we remember it. You know, we, we pay respect to um, the earth. Okay, so... Um, I decided to do um, this orchid, okay? So it's uh, it's it looks very detailed, but um, actually it's not extremely hard. It's just, um, it requires patience and, uh, you know, several um, steps maybe, or several breaks, but um, it's not too complicated. Hi, Joe. So um, you can just sketch it out or you can just paint the veins, uh, the patterns later on. It's up to you. In my case, um, here's my sketch, if you can see it. Okay, I just sketched this lightly. But since actually the, the patterns are quite dark, you can actually even line this uh, darker and it won't be very visible because the markings are um, of a deep color and they will probably be covered um, once you... Uh, color those um, lines that you drew so uh, this is actually pretty cool because you can actually you know draw the lines and it will be much easier or you can just wing it if you want to up to you in my case i drew the most uh, prominent ones and the smaller ones branching at the tips um, i didn't anymore so those parts i'll just wing but the more the, the darker ones i actually um, drew them so I will share that um, sketch later on with those uh, dark lines um, drawn. So it will be much easier for you if you'd like to use that as a guide or as um, for tracing. Okay, so now um, I'll flip down. And so stay with me. Okay. All right. So here's my desk. So this is just um, a, a small paper. So. When things are more complicated, um, I, I like to start smaller so that, you know, um, you can just, uh, for example, this is your first time painting more complicated flowers or orchids. You can take your time and you can just work small so it's less pressure. So you can start working small, but if you have a hard time, for example, um, you have uh, your hands shaking a bit, then I suggest you uh, work on a, lot, a bigger scale. That way, the finer lines won't be too hard to do. So again, it's up to you, but in my case, I wanted to just keep it small like this. So this is actually from a long, long piece of paper um, like this that I just cut. I have this long paper like this that I like to cut into smaller pieces. Okay, so I'm going to zoom so that you can see it um, much nearer because this is... Okay, there you go. Okay, so I prepared my mixing uh, plate because... Um, 
when I work with flowers, I just want to be able to prepare some of my colors in advance. All right, so um, I hope you can see it. I just drew it lightly. Okay, so for this um, orchid, I'm going to use um, the Allegro palette from Zen Art. So the Allegro palette has um, a lot of the warm colors that um, that are you know usually used for flowers and other vibrant, um, vivid, vividly colored um, subjects. So this is the Allegro, and here's the swatch cards. You can see lots of yellows, reds, even a bright pink, um, upper rose. So it's really perfect for um, floral paintings. Okay, so let me just put it here. Okay, so um, I just have the serena on the side just in case um, I would need it. But I think for this exercise, I already have the colors in the Allegro. Okay, so um, if you can see the photo, um, I will also share this along with the sketch. So no worries when you want to work on it yourself. Okay, so here uh, I, we will start with um, a really pale um, yellowish greenish color before we move on to the pinks. Okay, so we'll start with that. And I actually have this color right here, perfect, um, the Oriole in green. So the Oriole in green looks really uh, bright and vivid, but if you water it down, it's going to be more subdued. Okay, so if you're not sure of your colors, uh, then you can always test it out on a scrap paper before you apply it to your uh, main main work, okay, which I, I always recommend if you're unsure. Okay, so I'd like to use brushes from the Turner Collection because they are squirrel synthetic mix, so it has a certain softness, which is perfect for uh, florals. Okay, so just a number five uh, brush. Okay, so just wet it and just try out your mixture. So you can prepare on the side. Okay, you can already prepare your mixture. And you can test it out to see if you actually like the color okay so in my case i feel like it's uh, a little too green it's bright it's green but uh, in my photo um it's uh it has a more yellowish tinge so i'll mix some lemon yellow with my oriole and green to make it more a little bit neony okay and then again i'm gonna swatch it and uh, this time i think it's perfect so if you can see, uh, slightly more neon this time around. So you can tinker around with your mixture until you, you just keep swatching until you get what you're looking for. Okay, so take the time. Don't be impatient uh, because, of course, once you paint it here, it's going to be hard to, um, to fix it. Okay, so let's start. Okay, I'm going to zoom in even further. Okay, there you go just because this is going to be more detailed. Okay, let me just move this. Okay, there you go. Okay, so I'm going to start in the areas where I see um, the deeper, a deeper concentration of this color and then just pull it outwards. So I'm going to do um, wet and dry. I really like to do wet and dry, but um, if, you're, if uh, you want even softer edges and you're not comfortable pulling the color, then you can um, start wetting the areas first before applying. In my case, um, I'm, I do, I'm going to go with um, wet and dry. Okay, so I'm going to apply it here where I see it's deeper. And then dip my brush in water and go over the edges. And then just pull the colors outwards. Okay, so that's my, that's uh, what I usually go with. I'm comfortable using a wet and dry method, and I just do this color pulling. On the other side, I will do a wet and wet, just so if you prefer with, um, to go with that method. Okay, so here is a more concentrated area as well. So I'm going to apply it here, and then just dip my brush in the water and go over the edges with water and pull it so where you apply the color first it will have a deeper concentration and the edges where you applied water 
um, the pigment will slowly move towards there and it will be lighter. So you will have this um, softer gradation of your colors. So this is my go-to method usually. I, I do wet and dry a lot. Okay, so you can also do wet and wet. So let, how do we do that? Okay, so we'll first wet this whole area of this petal. Okay, so make sure it's glossy. Okay, not too, not too wet, just glossy. And once you have that down, then you can get the color that you've mixed. And again, apply those to the areas that you like, that you see have a much darker concentration of it. So just keep referring to your reference photo. Okay. And just like what I did with wet on dry, I'm also going to pull the color a little bit more just to help it spread. So I basically dip my brush in the water, go over the edges to help it spread. Okay, so you can go about it um, two ways. Okay, so you can do wet and dry or wet and wet. So um, we are just setting up the first layer. So we will work in layers. So um, just be patient and we'll wait for each layer to dry or you can use your heat gun or your blower, blow dryer to um, hasten the drying time. Okay, so I'm going to do it here as well. I'm going to go back to my wet and dry. So this technique is much easier to do for, you know, first few layers, especially the first layer. It's the first one. So even if it's not perfect, I, you won't be too pressured because you'll still layer other layers on top of it. Okay. And in this area, it's actually very more concentrated. So I'm going to add a more concentrated mix of oriole and green with lemon yellow. Okay, so that's why it's important to have um, two kinds of two to three kinds of yellow. You want a warm yellow, you want a cool yellow. So usually your cool yellow, um, having lemon yellow is enough. And for your warm yellow, you can have um, Hansa yellow or, or cadmium yellow. Um, and it's also um, really useful to have um, yellow ochre. So several yellows will give you different effects when mixed, when used alone, and when mixed with other colors. So maybe sometimes you're wondering why you can't seem to get this more vibrant um, yellow that you're looking for. It's probably because you're using um, a different yellow, maybe a warmer yellow, and maybe your eye is looking for a cooler yellow, which is lemon yellow. So just experiment with your colors, swatch them out, and see what mixtures you get when you mix it with other colors. Okay, so here um, it's basically the same that I used here, Oriole in green with lemon yellow. It's just a more saturated, more concentrated mix. So I'm going to add water to it because I will use it for the petals down here. So again, I'm just going back to my wet and dry. I'll apply it where it's very vibrant and then dip my brush in water and go over the edges and pull the colors outward. So whenever I feel like my brush is too wet, I just wipe it here on my um, paper towel. So just do that. Just keep going over your water to your paper, to your paper towel. So just um, keep practicing, keep painting, because that's the best way to learn um, your water control. So it's really a lot of um, water control with watercolor, how much water to use, how much diluted should your mixtures be. So don't worry. When it dries and you feel like it's too light, you can just go over it with another layer. So that's the one thing that you need to keep in mind with watercolor is if it dries lighter. So it may look like um, the right 
saturation when it was wet but when it dried up it's much lighter that happens a lot so just add another layer okay like here earlier um, here in the reference photo it's much more vibrant so that's why I added another layer so just work in layers okay so it's really also <laughs> patience all right so um, this is uh, cold pressed paper so that's the nice thing with um, thick cold pressed paper is it can take so much abuse okay so now that we have the first layer down um, I'm going to go now and add um, like a light wash of, of the pink so for that I'm going to use um, upper rose right here it's a vi vibrant nice pink so I don't I don't need to try to mix a pink anymore so if, if you don't have uh, a bright pink like this um, you can get this with cooler reds you can get this with carmine or with um, quinacridone reds so just try to uh, mimic a bright pink color Okay, so in this case, I just want a light wash. So I'm going to start with just a really light wash. And then try it out on my swatch card. Okay, so I think I need to lighten it a bit further. Add more water. Okay, and then test it out again. Okay. And then I'm going to go over um, some areas. Where I feel like there's more pink. So make sure your previous layer is dry because otherwise um, if it's still wet instead of the colors layering on top of each other um, they will mix and it will create uh, more often than not a muddy a muddy mixture. So uh, before adding this wash of pink here and there make sure your your greenish yellowish layer is dry again you can use your heat gun or your blow dryer to hasten the drying time so I'm not applying it everywhere just in areas that have um, a tinge more pink So as you can see, I'm just repeating the same technique, applying where it's most concentrated, dipping my brush in the water to dilute the edges and pull the colors outward. Okay, so let's do that for all the sections that have a more concentrated pinkish hue. Again, dip your brush and then pull the colors, or the color in this case, just one, outward. So really, um, it's a process. So just step by step, section by section, part by part. This is the nice thing about separate flat, uh, petal, petals because you can focus on working on each petal. So it, it uh, makes it much easier rather than you know, having to work quickly over the whole thing. You can just focus on each part and take breaks and you know, um, don't pressure yourself too much. So just think about it. It's like drawing the body, the human body, instead of um, going crazy thinking of the complete finished body. Imagine working on it part by part. That way you break it down into more manageable areas and you actually get to enjoy completing the whole process. So here again, I'm applying it where it's I see a more pinkish concentration. Not everywhere, because you actually want also the vibrancy of the neon green, yellow green color. Just like how it looks like in the reference photo. So you're making sure that your first two layers already creates the the volume of the petal. So doing your layers like this really helps you create volume and makes your petals look more realistic without going too overboard with all the details. Okay, and here too, there's some pink. 
So this is really this is really the magic of watercolor because it's transparent compared to other mediums. You actually want to really explore layering, layering it. You get more beautiful um, values. Your depth is uh, different. And here, here's what it looks like. Okay, so it doesn't look flat anymore. So just adding two layers, just having two layers already gave you this nice um, volume to your petals. Okay, so some areas I see a more a deeper color. So I'm going to work on that next. I'm going to get um, opera pink, prepare it here on the side, and just add the air to the areas that have a deeper hue. So if your paper is still wet, it's gonna, as you can see, I just dab the color in and it's still spreading. So this is also the nice thing about um, thick paper. And this is why a lot of people like cold pressed because um, it stays wet longer. So you can actually work on your um, areas much longer and you can do so much more and your paper won't give up on you. So it, it won't easily curl, it won't easily buckle or pill or tear from all the water and all the strokes that you need to do. Just be careful not to keep on using too many strokes. Sometimes uh, overworking will ruin the effect. Okay, so just the right amount of effort. Again, all these will come more naturally the more often that you paint and experiment and try out. There's no really no better way to learn. So when I started watercolor, I really had a lot of frustration. But if you just keep doing it, if you keep using it, you will on your own, you'll get to discover how to um, make things work for you. Okay, so in my case, I try to just layer and add and just slowly go to where I need to go. So don't be in a hurry, okay? Step by step. So some parts are still wet. Again, if you want it to be with a softer edge, just wet that section and then dab your color in. Okay. And then I'm also going to work down here. There are some areas that are, have also a more pinkish color. Go over the edges with a wet brush just to help it spread and you can even lift it off if you feel like you put in too much okay so that's why as you keep improving you'd also really want to invest on better paper because you can you can do scrubbing like this what I'm doing removing color that's a bit too dark So as you can see, from one layer to second layer to third layer, and your petals are slowly becoming more 3D. All right. So now I'm going to go to the center area where there's a really bright lemony yellow at the edges. But before I do that, I'm just going to go over it with a blow dryer quickly just so nothing is wet and nothing will suddenly just spread that I don't want to spread. Because the center area is, um, I want to keep the edges crisp. Okay, to separate it from um, the soft petals at the back. So I want the center to be crisp, so I'm making sure that everything around it is dry. Then I'm just gonna go and pick yellow, lemon yellow straight from the pan. For smaller sections that I just want to go in with a concentrated color, I just go directly from my pan to here. Okay, but if you're not um, 
con uh, comfortable doing that just apply it here on your mixing plate before you um, dab it on your paper in my case it's just a small section and it's of it's a concentrated color so I just go and get from the pan and paint directly so if you if you're using paint from tubes then um, don't do that because it will be more concentrated and more wet so uh, if it's a tube um, of course dab it first here on your mixing plate and add the necessary water amount of water to um, dilute it a bit so I'm just adding to the edges because if uh, you'll see later on um, the, the small petals here at the center have a bright edge okay and the center area is of a different color it's a warmer color okay so I'll just show again the photo just so you can see what I mean okay so as you can see the edges here have this bright yellow so I used lemon yellow for that and for the center part it's a warmer yellow so I will use um, yellow deep from my um, this one from my Allegro palette okay so I'm going to get yellow deep and then apply it here Okay, so just getting the right colors down will make a huge difference. Okay. And then a little bit of a light tinge of yellow here on the white. So for the white, I'm just going to leave it white. I'm not going to paint on it. So the white will be the paper. So it's not too small, so it's not too hard to paint around it. Sometimes when it's just so hard, um, I just paint over everything and for the little whites I use um, a white um, gel pen or white gouache or white acrylic or um, white ink to do to um, add the whites as highlights later on okay so now that we have this um, we're okay we're gonna leave this to dry and then I'm going to start with the veins or the patterns of the petals Okay, so for that, I'm going to switch to a different brush. Um, I will go and use a really small rigger brush from the fine line. So this is a 4 over 0 rigger. So I really like this because it helps, it allows me to do the small, um, long lines quite easily. So even if you press, you know, if you press hard you will still be won't be able to make a really thick line so it's really very difficult to make a mistake with with using a smaller brush so this set is from a whole set of fine brushes so this is the fine line it has 12 brushes and one of them is this one the rigger brush okay so this is one of my most used brush from that set okay so uh, before i do that i'm just going to prepare the color here so it's the same color, upper, upper rose. But before I do that, I'm just going to test out how it looks like when it's really concentrated. If I already like it or if I want to add maybe a little bit of the carmine to it to even make it have a deeper color. We'll see. That's why I always like to test it out before I put it on the paper just so I can be sure. Okay, so I have it prepared. I just wet my brush, not too wet. Then I'll get some of it and then test it out. Okay, so I think it's nice. It's a deep color and it looks the same to as the reference. So I'll go with that. So just upper rows. No need to add red. But again, this is also a matter of preference. Of course, each of us. We want to um, interpret things differently and that's fine you know if you want to make it redder you can do that if you're not you know going for a hyper realistic um, drawing so here um, I'll start with the lines some parts are thicker so if you want 
to water it down just dip your brush in the water and just go over it and add water okay you can even soften the edges if you want softly go over the edges so it's up to you how much detail you want to do to your lines and you can even add the small dots if you have the patience for it this the pattern sometimes um, it has little dots here and there but let's start with the lines and we can add the dots later on if we like okay so let's go and do the patterns I'm going to start with the bolder bolder patterns coming from the center and then just add the smaller ones later on once I have the thicker ones down okay so don't worry if it looks if it seems too stark remember I'll wait for your work to be finished before you judge it you won't get the final look until you actually finish things so we're all guilty of that we're judging our works too early and we'll, oh no this is starting to look bad and things like that okay finish it first before um, feeling any regrets okay so this one is the longest you act you will really have to take your time doing this try to get the the curves of the lines here and there they're not all going into doing one curve so make it more organic so again, I'm starting with the major lines. And then later I will add the smaller lines branching out from these thicker lines. So if you're not confident yet, just start with um, lighter lines. If you're like afraid to have it immediately this dark, you can start smaller and lighter and you can always add again you can always layer if you want to make things darker okay so again be kind to yourself okay flowers can be hard and this one this orchid it's very detailed but i like it i like the pattern Okay, so as you can see, it's very easy to make the, the small um, thin lines with this rigger brush. So that's the, that's the magic of the rigger brush. It's long and it's um, thin. So it's perfect for these thin and long lines. So if you, can, if you look at the patterns of this, it's like branches of a tree branching out actually so here I'm starting to do the smaller ones branching out and try to keep the edges white okay the edge of the flower has or the petal has this like halo around it so keep that so that Later on, when you want to add background, if, for example, you're adding a, a deep background, like dark blue or black, um, the white halo around the, the edge will actually make your flower pop from your background. So some, if you, you've seen some, like to, to add um, dark backgrounds to their floral creations, just giving the the flowers the center of attention especially for pale flowers white cream okay so here i actually find it very fun um i know it might take a long time but work on it in sections you know work on this section take a break come back to your flower work on the other petal and it's just amazing because you can end up with a really detailed flower but you know it's it's actually enjoyable doing this so as long as you have the 
the background you've set up the background you've made it um, have volume before you add this um, these lines um, everything will be so much easier and you can just have fun and concentrate on the lines because you've already taken care of the solidity of your of the volume of your background okay so now I have this I'm going to just concentrate on the edges where everything is just branching out into smaller vein like structures so you don't have to follow your reference photo exactly just as long as you get the general um, look of it anyway no two petals will have the same pattern for sure so no need to stress about copying exactly from the photo okay so just you know kind of looks the same okay go so getting these edges right will really be important because it starts out thick and it branches into smaller and finer lines so it's like it's like blood vessels actually so what do you guys have favorite orchids i'm not very well versed with the different kinds of orchids unfortunately but I'm sure you guys, you're more familiar than me. Do you have favorite um, flowers? Specific orchids that you like? Okay, so here one petal is almost done. Again, don't worry. You can come back to this later and add more if you feel like you need more okay so now i'm just going to add dots here and there especially here at the center so when you do dots okay just like if you do it with ink with pen and ink don't be in a hurry because you will get dashes more than dots so with dots you want to actually be um, more patient and just actually try to do the dot with just a tip okay uh, dot lift dot lift dot lift okay because if you're in a hurry you will get checks and dashes instead of more uh, uh, dot shapes okay so take your time and do your dots or use a different um maybe not use a brush use something with a sharp tip and use it on your for example i have this um uh what do you call this color shaper from the acrylic brush set you can just use this instead and just add the dots okay so if you have more solid um, material like this you can just use it to add the dots that way even if you're in a hurry it's really gonna turn out more dot than anything because it's not gonna um, change shape unlike brushes so this is a color shaper so you can also check this out color shapers can also be very very useful okay so adding the adding the dots already makes it even look better so there are dots here at the edge of the lines and near the center so the dots are more solid and there are smaller dots going towards the edges but lighter of color and sparser so apparently orchids can be hard to take care of if you're taking care of them and some orchids are so rare that some people actually steal them i'm so amazed growing up that people actually stole orchids i had no idea that they can be so rare i guess some some kinds are unfortunately i'm not too good with taking care of plants <laughs> i have i only have the hardier plants because i feel i'm um, guilty if i 
kill too many of them so I have some but those that you know are really hard to kill okay so here adding the dots also softens um, the lines that we added and makes it even more it adds a softer touch to the petal okay so let me just go over this So here the dots are darker and here they're lighter. So I start here and then I move outwards once the color is less concentrated. Okay, so this is what it looks like right now. Okay, so right now it looks, you know, totally unfinished, but just keep working on it, work in sections. So here and there, I'm adding extra color where I feel like there's a dash of very pale pink. So I'll add that. So again, step by step. We started with the background, two to three layers. And then now we're working on the finer details, adding the dots, adding more softer areas of pink here and there. Okay, so now we're done with the side. Let's move on to the other parts. Again, once you've finished everything, and if you feel like you need to add more lines here and there, maybe the edges, you can totally add that later. So don't worry about the tiniest details yet. Okay, we're um, work section by section. Okay, so let's add more pink here. And let's start adding the thicker lines again. Okay, so look at your photo and try to discern which lines are thicker and darker okay so this is actually it takes more time but it's actually much easier than doing a a delicate petal with really um, several different values because this you just need two to three layers previously and then now you can work on these patterns that don't really need a lot of value but more of brush strokes so it might seem too complicated but actually no just do it section by section and everyone can do it promise you can do it so I really hope you'll try this out and just, you know, have more patience with yourself. Take your time, take breaks. I keep reminding because uh, sometimes I'm also really, well, not just sometimes, more often than not, I find myself getting too impatient and I really have to remind myself to, you know, take a break because sometimes you're you're so much into it that um, you don't realize you're overworking things or you're forgetting some parts so it's also important to take breaks you know so your brain can reset your eyes can take a break okay so here i'm already adding the smaller areas So what, as you can see, once you get the hang of things, it becomes much easier and it becomes more natural. You just add things without even having to consult your photo so much. So I'm basically just checking to see where the darker lines are, where the thicker lines are, and then just really adding the smaller sections. So do you guys... Um, like to garden do you like to take care of um, plants i'm sure you if you do that's really great because then you can take photos easily and you can just have your references straight from your garden that would be awesome so what are your favorite flowers guys
me I like um, actually like chrysanthemums because they take quite long to wilt I love it it's like you get to keep them in your house and in a vase much longer than other flowers and I just love it okay so if you're going to do oh uh, okay a background before okay this is up to you <laughs> because um, if uh, I do something complicated like this for example um, I want to see first if um, I like it as it is with a white background sometimes you don't need a background actually if you if you have a really beautiful flower by itself already but if you want to have a more complicated background and you're going to do a complicated flower like this then I suggest you do the background first that way if you don't like the background um, then you didn't waste time working on your flower first and then suddenly adding a background that you didn't like and now everything is wasted so but you know what um, I like to do is you make a study of it um, previously you, you, you if you have a sketchbook which I suggest you do you should have test out your whole composition your sketchbook the colors of your flower the background that you plan to do that way you can already see on a smaller scale and a simpler scale the colors that you want to put together your flower and your background and see if you like it so that's the first thing that way you can already test it out um, on a much simpler scale but yeah if you work on if you plan on working on a really beautiful flower that you know you're gonna take a lot of time in and you want also a beautiful background then work on your background that way <laughs> no regrets if you don't end up liking your background okay but that's just me okay so it's up to you too but it's just me uh, being like uh you know uh saving you or saving myself the time of regrets but typically um personally i do my subject first and then i add backgrounds later on if i do want um, that's why I also uh, take photos of my works. You can also do that. You take a photo of your work, and then before you even do your background, um, work on it on your phone or on your computer. Try to add a, a background digitally, and then you can see if you actually like it before you actually go and add it. So thankfully, technology really makes it easier for us to, to test things out. So you can do that too, which um, I did with one of my paintings. I wasn't sure if I wanted to add like golden teardrops. So be before I actually added it, I took a photo of my painting and then I tried adding digitally um, teardrops and well, I liked it. So then I decided to add it. So you can also try out um, that um, process. Okay, so like what I did here, some sections have like a, a streak of pink but pale. So I'm going to add it here and there where I see it in the photo. So I just add it with my rigger and then I just add water to soften it further. So don't be afraid to apply your color and then if you feel like it needs to lighten while it's still wet, just add water, soften it. Everything can still be quite workable as long as things are still wet yes really <laughs> because I I've been there you know I've had terrible backgrounds that really made me regret like why did I not you know try it out first or sketch it out properly first but don't worry we live and learn <laughs> anything that we you know all the mistakes that you go through will actually make you just make you better so it might be frustrating at that point when you made the mistake especially if you really worked so hard already but well you will definitely learn something from it okay so this one um, I can actually sometimes I like to do a really deep background so I can actually do a really deep black of this I don't have to use watercolor maybe I can use acrylic or even watercolor or a deep um, blue um, just so that the attention is really on the flower and it just makes this beautiful flower pop out 
So try, try also experimenting with um, different backgrounds. You know, sometimes you'll, you'll be surprised how it looks like, what um, effect it gives your, your painting, having just a white background, a deep background, a textured background. Have fun with it. Play around. Okay? So take a photo, um, try it out, and uh, see if you like what you experimented with. Okay, so again, I'm using my color shaper. So you can use something like this. You can use something pointed. Some people have glass pens. You can use your glass pen to um, add the dots. That way, the tip of your um, pen, or if you have a, an old pen that's run out of ink, you can also use that. You can dip it in your uh, mixture and just add the dots. And you can also use your brush. It just requires more precision and more patience. So if you guys ever tried pen and ink, you know, sketching with um, pen and ink, and you need to do pointillism, that's how you do it. You you dip and lift. You okay? So you don't you don't do it too quickly because it will really come out in dashes and checks instead of dots. And you really want the dots here because the petals have this freckles that really add to the whole beautiful effect. And you want that. Okay, so this, it will take long. So if I would work on this on my own time, it would take me the whole day or I will take breaks and do it through this several and in a few days time so i suggest you have fun with it and really um just work on each section okay so now we're done with two petals okay so we're gonna go and try to finish this all without background because i think you'll you guys will fall asleep on me already <laughs> if i take too long but i just wanted you to see the whole process of how i do it and how you can totally do this so if you look at this whole flower finished, it might seem too complicated, but really step by step and everything is achievable. Okay, so applying the darker lines. And the nice thing about this one is you can totally draw, sketch the lines and not have to worry about them because the deep pink will definitely cover your pre-drawn lines so you can you can sketch everything if you don't want to wing the little lines and such but um, for the drawing that i'm sharing after the live it will have the main lines and it will be up to you if you want to add the smaller lines so i added the the main lines so that um they're there as a guide which will be so much easier. Okay, so I suggest if you still don't have uh, detail brushes or a rigger brush, uh, you get you get a few detail brushes at least because they will help really help you with these fine details. It's really so hard to make a mistake doing the fine details because the brushes are already fine by themselves. So they already take a lot of the pressure off of creating the this minute, really delicate details. Okay. So if you really want to be more detailed, I can actually see even lighter, paler lines and veins. You can totally add that. But you don't have to, okay? Again, don't be too obsessed with your reference photo. If you're not aiming for a hyper-realistic work, then don't go crazy over it okay so here and there again I will add extra texture where I feel like there's more shades of pink but again do this slowly okay don't make it too dark and then regret later on you don't want to end up with a too dark work okay and now down here, this one doesn't have um, dots visible, so I will leave that as is. So the more um, 
visible dots are here on these two. So you can even add more if you feel like you want to really follow your photo. Okay, so just make sure that your mixture is wet enough. Sometimes it becomes roughish. It just means it needs more liquid, more water. Like now. So it's drying up. Right now here it's very hot. So it's becoming summer where I am. So all my um, mixtures dry up much quicker than usual. So we also have that to think about, the climate and the temperature where we are. Like some paints become moldy in some areas. Or some mixtures take time to dry because it's humid or damp. So many things will affect our, our painting, our process. Okay, so here I'm hurrying it up a bit, but when you do this, take your time, okay? Don't be in a hurry like me, you are not timed. But I still want to take the time, unlike before where sometimes I would shorten the time. Here I would really um, do it step by step with you guys so that you can see that, yes, it takes long, but it's actually quite repetitive right what I did here I did here I did for all the petals so you just need to do it step by step here I'm adding pink water down so it's like the petal like has this um, fold here in the middle and adding this soft pink here shows that it's not flat but it has like a little dip okay so here as well i'll finish all the petals so i can move on the center and we'll be done and then i'll have to think about the background because earlier i was thinking about making it a black or a deep blue but i will first test it out take a photo and experiment before I actually do it after working so hard on the flower I don't want to ruin everything with a bad background okay so having drawn the major lines really made it so much easier because once I've set them up then I can just slowly add the smaller lines after so every now and then I would check on my photo just to see if there are certain marks that I actually like that I want to mimic, you know, things like that. So everything is really according to preference. So even when we paint people, we also sometimes, if it's not a portrait, you know, it's not a commission where you have to do it exactly, we can change it up, right? We can change the tone of um, the skin tone Okay, here I'm also going to add a deeper pink on the edge, curved, so to just show that the petal is slightly curved here. Okay, so that's done. Okay, I, I'm, I can add more layers later on. For now, I will go to the middle part and add the deep pink color. Okay, so I'm switching my brushes again. I need a bigger brush. And start from the bottom where it's really concentrated taking care not to cover the bright yellow at the edges and then dipping my brush in water and then spreading the color upwards where it the pink is lighter than here at the bottom So again, if the, this needs to be darker later on, I'm just going to layer another layer on it. 
after the first layer dries. But for now, I have this. Then I'm just going back to my pan and then adding dabs of the color to even deep, deepen the color further. Where I see, based on my reference photo, it's deeper here and here at the edges. Now, I rinse my brush and this part is much, much lighter. So I am just going to pull the color from here and pull it inwards. And now I have this lighter part. So basically, I cleaned my brush, removed all the pink from it, and just used water and the color from this section to pull it inwards. Okay, so I'm going to do the same on the other side. So get a really concentrated mix of the upper rows. So I like this Allegro palette because it was really designed even with this really bright pink that will come in handy for the flowers that have a really bright pink tinge that's sometimes really hard to mix. Okay, and then dip my brush with water to soften and pull the color upward. Okay, so this is my um, style. This is how to how I create my soft created gradiated effects. As long as the mixture is still wet, you can still move it around. You can still pull the colors where you want them. You can lift the colors. Just keep in mind that some colors are staining, so some colors might be hard to lift off. So get to know your colors, swatch them out so that you can see which colors are staining, which colors are more forgiving for lifting. Okay, so now we have this and I'm going to go and do the pink around this white bud in the center. Okay, so it doesn't have to be exactly perfect or the same. Okay, as long as you get the general shape of things, that's okay. So take care not to paint over the white if you're keeping preserving the white by negative painting. Okay, so keep in mind that the white is your paper. If you did make a mistake, then you can just um, use white gouache later on or white acrylic if you have that and add the white. Okay, but in my case now, I'm painting negatively and keeping the white white by not painting on the paper. Okay, and now I will add a dash of yellow right here, just very pale. And then wait for it to dry. So while that's drying, this part where there are dots, I will just um, get my brush, add that color. So now I'm going to use Carmine mixed with violet, quinacridone violet, for a deeper, more maroon color. Okay, so this is for the dots here at the center. So I'm just using my color shaper to add the dots. So again, try not to make the spaces between the dots too even, because that will look weird. Some dots are close to each other, some are farther, some are lighter, some are darker. So try to do that as well so that it doesn't look fake or, you know, um, weird. Okay. And if the section is dry, then add the dots there as well. Okay. 
Okay. And then for the last part, it's here. So this is just upper rows. Okay, so you just need to do a little bit of shading. So like what I usually do, I just add the pink at the deepest areas directly. And then rinse the color out of my brushes for the lighter areas. Okay, so very easy. Add the pink where it's very saturated. Rinse your brush. Add where you see there are darker colors and just rinse in between to lighten your values. Okay, and then here, some pink at the center. So I'll add that and then rinse my brush again and then just slightly pull the edges to soften the color that I added. So I want some areas to be even of a darker pink and to fix the shape. Okay, so if you work in layers, it will give you time to take a look at things, um, fix things, add extra layers if needed. So don't be in a hurry, okay? Take your time so that you won't make too harsh mistakes. Okay, so I'm going to add a little bit of yellow here at the edge of the petals. Because I see um, a yellow edge here. So just refer to your photo and see where you can add the colors that you might have missed earlier, but you can totally add later at the end of things. So that's what I do. And you slowly actually get to complete your work bit by bit. And it gives you more time to take a step back and check, look at things. So here I'm also going to add Oriole in green with yellow, a more concentrated mix. Here under. Okay, to, to show that these petals are under these ones on top. So I'm adding a shadow. Nothing too intense, but it will really help lift off these petals on top from these ones that are below it. And I will do the same here as well because this is also at the back. So just here, where you know there will be some shadow, nothing too extreme. I'm using the same colors as the base color that I used for painting the first layer of the petal. So don't use brown, don't use colors that you don't see, okay? Because that will muddy your work. So adding on the edges. Just helping shape everything together. And there you have it. So you can add even more details. Like for the center, there are like deeper lines and such. You can do that later on. But for now, this is my orchid. It's, uh, let me just get the reference photo so you can see. So this is the original. Okay. And this is what I did. So I like it. So it doesn't have to follow exactly. But you get the general look of the orchid. It looks like an orchid. Oh, I wait, I forgot this this really important part at the center. Okay, let me just go through that. Okay, so I will again get my opera rose mix, add it here. Get my shaper and add the this section at the at the center. Okay, so this one at the middle has like V shapes, so I'll do a little bit of that. And then on the side, it has the dots. OK, 
Okay, and there you have it. It's finished. Okay, so I hope you enjoyed this, guys. I hope I was able to teach you something. And I hope you try this out for yourself, this orchid, because you can totally do it. Okay, it just takes time, but the steps are really so um, achievable. And you just need to, to work on it slowly. Okay, so don't be in a hurry. Okay, so if you have any questions, ask away. Don't be shy before I go. Meanwhile, I'll pop back to my face, zoom out, and flip things around. Okay, so thank you for joining me, guys. And um, here is my finished orchid. Really cute. And again, um, I'm still not sure if I want to do just a white background or if I want to make it pop even, even further and uh, use a deeper color background. So again, like um, what Evelyn asked, you can totally uh, first try it out. You can take a photo like what I do, and then you can just work on it digitally, like try to test out different colors um, to see if you actually like um, certain colors with your work. It might it be in your head, it might look like you want it, but to be actually see it visually, um, it's better. So you can test it out before you regret it uh, later on. Okay, so um, just uh, st check this event page. Um, when I end the live, um, I will upload the sketch and you can download it. Um, you can save it. Um, you can print it out and you can just uh, paste it on a bright day on the uh, window and put your paper over it and trace it or use it as a guide if you want to do the sketch yourself. Okay, so thank you for joining me and um, I'll see you guys next time. Bye!